time for Saratoga. It's time to dish with the man who beat the meat last year, David Levitch, the Paddock Prince. I'm going to get right into it. What was your secret? Very uh, impressive to have a flat bet profit among all picks for the entire meeting. Yeah, it was a good meeting for me last year. I um, finished off pretty strong uh, at the very end. I think I remember I had a good last couple of weeks that got me over the top. But yeah, looking forward to a new Saratoga. I think it's the most follow meet of the year by many people. I feel like that's the one meet that everybody maybe keen on a little bit, but it's much shorter. So I think it's the one meet everybody really dials in on. And now that Del Mar doesn't start for, was it eight days after? It's a little right. different. They're not on top of each. I mean, they obviously are for a few weeks, but Saratoga will be the main focus coming up. So I'm looking forward to it. And uh, folding in a little colonial with uh, your buddy helping out with that. So uh, the Eastern Seaboard, well represented by the Prince and Horse Racing Nation. Now, you mentioned it's sort of the meat everyone follows, which I totally agree with. I mean, it, it's the one, like, if you win, everyone's going to know about it, and there's a certain sense of pride there. And it seems that that is the case for jockeys as well. I would say, by far, it is the meat where winning the jockey title means something. People are paying attention to it more than, I think, any other place. And, of course, that goes through Irad Ortiz. Uh, any threat to him this year? I got him at even money to win. I think I think I would, for second, I would bet even it, money. Yeah, I think for second it's more interesting. I think I think it would be between Pratt or Saez. I think Jose Ortiz had a great Belmont meet, but you gotta remember that Linda Rice won. I don't know how many races Linda Rice won. I think it was in the 30s. So I don't know if Linda Rice has enough bullets to win 30 more races at Saratoga. It's a little tougher with Kentucky people coming up and all those claiming races. So while Jose, Jose Ortiz did have a great Belmont meet, I would I would probably bet my money on IRAD at even money. And then I think Pratt, you know, people forget he did come second last year. It's not like it was his first year at Saratoga and he came second. He had a really, really good Belmont meet, especially towards the end. He won five races last um, was 4th of July. So he's coming into the meet doing well. Um, I saw your poll today, and I don't know if you want to spoil the answer, but I think I, I know who it was. And it was yeah, the I, uh, I only set it to two hours because by the time this comes out, the poll will have ended. So uh, not so much a spoil as a reveal. And it was Julian Leperu. Uh, now, admittedly, he had the, the least amount. So of all those riders, um, and this is top 15. But even if we went down to the, the riders that had 15 or 20 mounts, Julian's still up there, uh, which admittedly surprised me. I mean, I'm a fan of the guy. Didn't think he had had that great of a meet, uh, made the most of, of his opportunities. And, uh, yeah, way up there with the flatbed profit. Yeah, he rode a lot of horses for Phil Bauer. And then I was Kenny me peak. I saw on Friday he has a couple mounts for me peak off the bat. So, yeah, Julian had a sneaky, really good meet last year at Saratoga. And I saw Florent Giroux coming this year. So it seems like you got Ricardo, Tyre Gaffleon. So you got to – four to five Kentucky guys. So like you said, this is the one meet where everybody comes and the jockeys. And I think I read one last year, but I don't, obviously he didn't have the best return on investment for play. Yeah, and, and that gets uh, a popular topic uh, on Twitter is whether I read Ortiz is over bet. And at the Belmont meet, he actually was not over bet. Uh, but, you know, at Saratoga, more casual money, totally different animal. He won 19%, which uh, very impressive given the total amount of, of mounts he had. Uh, but the the impact, not great. And then the ROI uh, certainly could be better. You mentioned Flavian Pratt. He was actually the only, uh, no, that's not true. Joel Rosario also at 21%. Only two of the riders among the top 15 by mounts eclipsed 20%. Pratt was one of them. Uh, but what's super impressive to me is the ROI uh, Clearly, the, the New York betters did not have faith in this guy. Do you think that's going to continue this year? Is he actually going to be value when he's on the right horse? I don't know, because if it Belmont, and even Belmont, which is a pretty followed track, he's kind of, he doesn't take as much money as you would think. And he's, I mean, Ired's probably the best rider, but I don't think Flavian Pratt's that far off from Ired. I mean, I, read, I mean, I would say they're the best two riders in the country. So I don't know why Flavian wouldn't. I know it depends on the mounts and who he's riding for, but he's been riding a ton of Chad Brown horses lately again. So I'm sure he'll have a lot of Chad horses going into the meet. So it'll be interesting to see how the people bet him. He's won eight races last week, so he's kind of coming into the meet strong. So I would expect him to take some money, but nobody's going to take money like I ride does.
No, that's for sure. And then at the bottom, I was I was actually surprised to see Carmouche, Cancel, and, and McCarthy that low. Uh, you know, they all obviously can't, can't be positive uh, because some are positive, some are negative. But that's uh, pretty dreadful, if I'm being honest. Uh, just just a matter of uh, not not getting the same type amounts they get downstate. Yeah, and Saez comes in town too. He doesn't ride in New York anymore, but at Saratoga, he I mean he had he had 281 mounts last year. That's a ton of mounts. That's second most just behind Irad. So these guys that come in, I mean, even you know, people like Ricardo has 105, Gaffleone had 170. So, you know, all these guys coming in from Kentucky, it's just the guys that are the lower echelon in New York, which is no shame. Um, Eric Hensel, Trevor McCarthy, those type guys. Um they're not going to use math. Was Les Connor hurt last year? Was uh, Les Connor yeah. No, he's at second. He's second. No, no, he's second. He got hurt later on. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's I mean, another yeah, guy. only 142, though. I mean, a lot of the regular is over 200. So he may have missed some days or been at Monmouth for something or whatever. Be interesting to see how Rosario does this year. He's been a little – I wouldn't say he's been he's been slumped, but he's been winning a lot a lot of stakes races. He hasn't done great in um, just your normal Thursday or Friday card. So we'll see if Rosario can get it rolling again because when he's there, he's obviously one of the best. No doubt. Well, there's uh, the the top fifteen. Uh, Leper on top surprised me a little bit. Uh, Castellano been riding out of his skin. Uh, certainly well known this year with the Derby and Belmont wins, but. Seems like his come up, uh, his his renaissance started last year. Maybe it was. I was exactly going to say that. I think his renaissance started at Saratoga last year. I mean, look at his ROI. I mean, he he really got it going again at Saratoga last year after he was struggling for a while, and that's kind of carried all the way through the winter into now. Obviously, winning two legs of the Triple Crown. So, yeah, I agree with you. And speaking of uh, the Triple Crown, we're certainly hoping to to see as many horses as possible in the Travers, probably see some prep work in the Haskell. And Jim Dandy, uh, who, who you got as your top three-year-old right now? And I would even say more importantly, Travers specific, since this is a Saratoga show, who, uh, who do you think should be favored right now? If there was a paramutual wager or a future wager on the Travers, who would you say is the most likely winner? I would say Forte is at this point out. His, his Belmont was really good for considering a 10 week layoff. I saw he's working really well again. I know this is a Saratoga show, but they actually might run him in the Haskell. So it'll be interesting to see what prep they go to because he said he gets a week later. It's also a grade one compared to a grade two. He also put your S Tap and Trice going there possibly. So I don't know if he'll split them up or flip plans with them. But I think right now, if the Travers was this Saturday, I would take Forte, no doubt about it. Yeah, I, I would agree. I, I'd certainly say most like the winner. If they, I mean, they they overbet him. I think there's other options. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that all shakes out. But uh, I agree with you. I think if the Travers was Saturday and you were Javier Castellano, would you rather ride, ride Mage or Archangelo? Mage. That's, I don't know the answer to it. I, I think you would. <laughs> I, I really don't know the answer to it. Cause yeah, Arcan- I mean, Archangelo. <sighs> I don't. I, to me, in my head, a mage won the Derby, so that's like ooh, yeah, which is more important than the Belmont. I mean, Argandro won the Belmont, so that's right there. But mage was running with Forte. Got, I mean, he got bet in the Florida Derby like he was clearly the, the second best horse, and he ran. I remember with that exact. And the Florida Derby was paying like four dollars. Yeah, that's how. Yeah, it was hammered. Mage was supposed to come second. Whereas Archangelo, and again, not that betters are always going to get it right, but, you know, this is a horse who was not favored to Bishop's Bay, clearly better. I mean, we know that now, but uh, I would stick with Mage. Yeah, it's just something I was thinking about the other day. That's going to be a tough choice for Javier. If they're both going into the Travers doing well, which one he would pick. I'm sure he would – I think he has a connection to Mage's connections as well, so I'm sure he would go with Mage, but both of those horses are obvious. And then, like I said last time, we talked the Arabian brothers. We're going to see what they end up doing, Arabian Knight and Arabian Lion. Right. No, this is uh, it's a good group. It's a shame we lost two fills, but uh, I would expect we're going to see most of the big names – in the Travers, so uh, it's part of the fun of Saratoga. Certainly see plenty of big uh, names in the turf races, et cetera. Any thoughts on the opening day card yet? I thought it was pretty good. Uh, the Scourville, I saw the rain might happen a little bit, so hopefully we can keep some um, keep the races on the turf. But I thought the Scourville came up pretty good, 11 horses. 
coming from all over the place, Kentucky parks, New York. So it looked like a, it looked like a pretty solid opening day card, to be honest. Yeah. And I believe uh, we do have uh, Skylar village. Take a look at the field real quick. And these are actually the horse racing nation odds uh, expecting wine on tap to be the favorite with uh, Irad Ortiz up. Uh, yeah. F field of 11 uh, based, Based on these prices, I'm guessing some are very much on the outside looking in, uh, but still have to think four or five of these are going to be competitive. Yeah, I, I did actually. I've already done this race. It's very interesting because the 11 horses, I was looking at this race and Sugar Treat, the 11 horse, that horse had no business winning her debut. She didn't draw a great post, so I'm looking at these odds right here. I think Wine on Tap is probably the most likely winner because you don't see a tap and break like that going five furlongs. Right. So obviously going six, Wine on Tap's probably going to get better. She also drew well to the outside. The, the one horse, Carmelina, was super quick on debut, so I expect her to set the pace. But at first glance after doing the race and looking at these odds, I think it's a – I'll probably use the seven and 11 in a lot of stuff and then throw the one in there because these parks connections are very good at shipping up their horses to these early Saratoga stakes races. And if speed is always dangerous, so I'll probably be using the one seven and 11 in here, but I would watch out for that 11 horse sugar treat. She had a pretty, and I saw Mark Cassie said she was working really well on the dirt. Um, I know most trainers say their horses are working well, <laughs> but I think she's going to offer good value in this race and she might get a little forgotten about being way outside because I agree with your odds. I don't think wine on tap. I don't think she's going to be eight to five would be the highest. I think she would be. Right. Yeah. The 11 horses helps uh, spread a little bit of money around, but like you said, uh, winning on debut like that, certainly going to attract some interest, but sounds like we're, we're getting right to it with an Ortiz Pratt throwdown down uh, in the Schuylerville. That is race nine of 10 on opening day. And uh, the Prince will have uh, full card coverage all 40 days of the Saratoga meeting, which does start Thursday. Uh, and you have a package for the meet as well, correct? Yeah, I got the package up till Thursday for the entire meet. Um, still have the subscriptions, obviously, which gets you Saratoga, Delmar, and every Colonial. Will be, Jason will be doing Colonial on Saturdays. And obviously, I'll have individual days every day as well per day. So looking Love forward it. to it. Maybe a Haskell Day card for Monmouth? Absolutely. Um, Haskell's, I know it's a Saratoga show, but it seems like the Haskell could be a, um, it's shaping up. It seems like it'd be probably, I think it's usually, I would say it's usually better than the Jim Dandy, but it looks like it's going to be a really good yeah. race. Now there were some years there though, that the Jim Dandy was, was making some noise. Well, Maybe Epicenter won last up, year. Didn't he? Yeah. Epicenter won the Dandy and the Travers last year. Who won the Haskell last year? No, why the Barrio? That doesn't sound right. No, it's, that's not right. No, it was Florent. Did um, oh, Cyber, Cyber Knife? Didn't he beat um, Mike Smith? Cyber Knife. Yep. He, he yeah. beat um, Tabor. Baffert. Yeah. So, yeah, the Haskell that's was right. good last year. But yeah, we'll be doing Haskell Day. Looking forward to it. All right. I'm looking forward to it as well. Uh, big opening days on Thursday, Saratoga and Colonial. And another reminder. Flat bet profit for the Prince. So uh, I want to get on board early and often. 40 days of Saratoga starts Thursday. David, best of luck. Best of luck.